Well, we've been doing a little series called Grace is Not a Blue-Eyed Blonde, and the whole focus of this little series is on probably one of the greatest needs every one of us have, and that is the need for the Lord to forgive us, for forgiveness, forgiveness, to be able to start all over again, to be clean inside and out by His touch in our lives. So we've been going through a series of questions. Today we're going to look at question number eight. And I do hope you'll go back and, and watch the uh, previous uh, red glasses on this subject. But question eight is, what do I do with my sin after I receive Christ? Because there is a, a misconception uh, that is not found in the Bible, by the way, but a misconception that people have that once I come to know Christ, he comes into my life, he forgives me my sin, I will never sin again. Man, do I wish that were true. It's not true. It's not what the scripture teaches. And so, therefore, what do I do after I become a Christian? Jesus comes into my life. What do I do with my sin after that? Well, the scripture is very, very clear. If you look at 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 in the Bible, this is what it says. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Confess our sins. And so what this is simply saying is, is to be able to be honest with the Lord and to tell him the things that we're aware of, and sometimes not even aware of, that we know we have, um, we have disappointed him by going against what he would want us to do. And so to confess your sin basically means to agree with God about what he already knows about you. Someone said it this way. They said, after you receive Christ, confession never takes place for salvation. Confession takes place to keep the lines of communication open. So in other words, once Christ is in your life, you don't, when you sin, have to ask Christ into your life again. He didn't go anywhere. <laughs> Once he's in you or me, he's there to stay. He will never leave you nor forsake you. So you need to get that one down because your confidence is going to waver in terms of your relationship with the Lord. If you think your relationship with the Lord and his staying in you is dependent upon how good you are. He loves you, comes in, cleans you up, continues to offer forgiveness because he knows we will need it. Let me read this from the Message Bible. Uh, by Eugene Peterson. I hope you have a message Bible, but it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful translation of the Bible. But this is what he says uh, at the end of Psalm 51 in some of his personal remarks on Psalm 51. Alongside the basic fact that God made us good, Psalm 8, is the equally basic fact that we have gone bad, something like the way good fruit goes bad. For our experience of sin consists not in doing bad, but in being bad. It's a fundamental condition of our existence, not a temporary lapse into error. Confessing our sin isn't resolving not to sin anymore. It's discovering what God has resolved to do with us as sinners. And what he has resolved to do is tune us into the foot-tapping songs of forgiveness and set our once broken bones to dancing. I like that. You think about it and start dancing. 